One, two, three, swag! Yeah. Hey yo, what's up everybody? It's B Milton. Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host here on the Redskins Review. And today we're going to go over the Redskins versus Cardinals game. Um, I have a little bit of a different idea what we can do for this game. And maybe it's something we'll do in the future if you guys let me know that you enjoy this way of uh, video making. But first things first, uh, I am wearing my Kirk Cousins jersey, even though it's Monday. And I don't normally wear uh, jerseys unless it's on game day. But seeing that this man might not be here that much longer, seeing that he might get hurt because Vernon Davis doesn't feel like blocking, um, you know, I might as well wear it and enjoy the time that we have with this dude while we have it. Um, another thing I want to touch on before we get into the video is just the NFL in general and how much of a joke the NFL is. Um, yet again, I'm sure you guys all know about the... Um, Steelers uh Patriots ending last night uh where Jesse James he caught the football he turned with the football to run towards the end zone with the football he ha gets a knee down on the ground when he has the football his elbow hits the ground when he has the football and then at the very last second he extends the football over the goal line uh and at that point the ball moves a little bit in his hand and they call it not a touchdown. And it's just like, how dumb can the NFL be? How is that? How did anyone go through the rule books and think that this is a good idea? And this is the same thing, like whether Dez caught it or not. And, it's, you know, everyone, you know, we like to hound doing Cowboys fans for that stuff. But what if that shit happened to us, man? We would all be pissed too. Um, it's just the dumbest rule. Uh, the, gr the ground can't cause a fumble, but it can cause an incompletion in the end zone when you're taught that you can extend the ball over the goal line, and as, as long as you get it over the goal line, it's a touchdown. But because you caught a ball, and you turn, and then you extend the football, it's just, what? It's just stupid. Why? This is the dumbest thing. And that's just going into my next segment where... Yeah, uh, the referees have been really bad this year. How many times do we have to sit here and literally the referees pretty much end, took or ended a, a three of our games from us this year uh, because of bad calls or non-calls? And almost again in this game, uh, it happened again at the end of the game where Zach Vigil, uh, he the, the ball's thrown and, and at the end of the game, Zach Vigil... Goes around the receiver, grabs the ball, rips it out of the receiver's hands, pins it against his chest, and falls to the ground with it. Somehow, the referees didn't know that, or didn't see that, or didn't want to stop. And no one from NFL Network said, hey, you guys should stop the play real fast and go take a look at that on the sideline because that was an interception. I'm sorry, but if someone rips the ball out of your hands, pins it against their chest, and goes to the ground with it, that's an interception, bro. And like they, if they, if the Cardinals would have came back and won, yeah, it's still our fault because we let them come back and win. But that was a goddamn interception. And um, another thing I want to just throw in there before we get into the video is that um, is that freaking I saw on the internet that this year is the. This year we have uh, the NFL has the most injuries or most players on IR since 1998, and I don't know what the hell it is. I don't know why there's so many injuries this year, but there is, man, and it's ridiculous. Uh, bad, bad, uh, freaking bad uh, refereeing and just injuries this year. It's crazy. So, you know, I think in hindsight, when we get done this season, we're gonna look back and be like, man. This just, in general, wasn't a, a normal year in the NFL, and hopefully things get back to normal next year. So, let's get into the video. What I'm going to do is basically play the... I'm going to play the Cardinals game uh, and Redskins highlights and just talk over it, pretty much. So... Seven. For the Cardinals, they must get to the 35-yard line for a first down, and back at the 17, Cameron Sack, ball comes loose. All right, so this game I would like to dub as the Anthony Lanier game. Um, last 
last game, I came out and I was talking about how one of the only positives we could take out of the last game was Anthony Lanier uh, looks like a guy who wants to make the team next year. He looks like a guy who's having a breakout, you know, stretch of the season because, you know, I don't think Anthony, Anthony Lanier has really touched the field that much this year. Uh, and in the games so far, he has like four sacks. Some of them might be covered sacks or whatever. But for I think the amount of time that he's played and started is not that long. So I would like to dub this game the Anthony Lanier game. And hopefully uh, he becomes a good uh, you know factor for us on the defensive line. And he brings something to the table that we have not had since I would say Chris Baker. He, he just in a straight line gets to the quarterback and puts pressure on the quarterback now. Um, Matt Ioannidis can do that at some times, but he just doesn't do it with the ferocity that we ha haven't seen since Chris Baker has done it, and uh, that's what we've been seeing the past couple games. And it's recovered by Preston Smith of the Redskins following the sack by Anthony Lanier. He's right in the middle of your screen. He beats the center. See how just no time wasted. Chance. The only thing you would expect. No time wasted right to the quarterback. To protect that football and... You need a takeaway to start the game. Put your offense in great scoring position. The Redskins got it. Fourth sack of the season. Four. Also would like to point out that he had a nice tackle on the quarterback and he didn't draw a foul. Um, and then we'll get to Preston Smith later. Lanier. Smith with the recovery. And second and goal from the five. Cousins. End zone. Touchdown. This play uh this touchdown pass to Crowder I think is a really nice play and a nice draw up they they definitely seemed like they thought the run was coming so we could sit here and say it's a good design but if they didn't you know go for the run as much as they did it just makes it look a lot nicer it looks like we fooled them a lot more um but none you know great play great play by Crowder Davis and Crowder This is Kerwin Williams, and Williams picks up a first down out to the 28-yard line. What perseverance. Fitzgerald bottom of your screen from the 12-yard line. Play action. Gavin in trouble. Down he goes. Sack for the second time in his first quarter. It is Junior Gallet. All right, so for Junior Gallet, I don't – he might have had some more pressures in this game. Uh, uh, their, their quarterback was uh, – under fire all day long and um yeah Blaine Gabbert if you guys are ready to move on from this man everyone who's ready to just uh show Kirk Cousins the doors get ready for someone you better take a hard look at how Blaine Gabbert played in this football game and get ready for some of that here in DC uh unless we either get Drew Brees or we get Alex Smith if we don't get one of those two guys in the in free agency you start looking at getting a hard look at Blaine Gabbert and seeing how he plays football because that's what's going to be happening here in D.C. at the quarterback position. Now, Junior Gallet, great play. Um, just I'm going to same thing about Junior Gallet in this game uh, as I'm going to say about Preston Smith. Uh, you know, we beat the Cardinals, but we should beat the Cardinals, and we've been missing this all year. What Preston Smith and Junior Gallet have done in this game, we've been missing it all year when it when it counted. So. Uh, you know, not trying to take anything away from them, but this is what they should be doing against the Cardinals. His third sack of the season. It's 19. Cardinals empty the backfield. Gabbert in trouble on third down. Wrapped up. It's Anthony Lanier again. It's the Anthony Lanier show. Second set. Third for the Redskins in the first quarter. Phil Dawson from the left hash. 40-yard attempt. Dawson's kick just inside the right upright. This team as well, so they've got some versatility. On second and ten, the fake end around to Grant. They set up the screen. This is Bids. Bids still going inside the ten to the end zone. Touchdown. So this is actually really <clears throat> this is actually really surprising. Um, I think we all I mean, come on, man. If you're sitting here watching this video, if you if you care about the Redskins this much. Um, and you know the injuries that we've had this year at the running back position. Um, who the hell is Capri Bibbs? Um, this guy is someone we picked up off off of the street, and uh, he's playing now. And, you know, the other running back, Marshall, that we had was eh. 
You know, some of the other guys that we have picked up off the street to play running back for us are just eh. Now, Capri Bibbs, he kind of reminds me a little bit of uh, Mac Brown with his speed, his shiftiness. He's a little bit more light-footed. But the only thing about Capri Bibbs that we haven't really seen yet, at least, you know, a lot, is uh, what he's going to be like in pass protection. We don't know that yet, but as of right now, I think he's definitely an upgrade over the running back Marshall that we had. And just if he can stay healthy, he's an upgrade over anyone that we have at running back. Um, I mean, maybe, uh, obviously, uh, freaking uh, our other running back had a decent game, but Bibbs just is faster. Uh, he's When you get the ball into his hands, he seems to uh, just make plays, man. So far in this game, I still haven't seen much out of him, but uh, it, it's kind of a pleasant surprise seeing someone with speed uh, at the running back position because it seems like we keep going for these guys that are just you know, one-cut runners, even though that's not the type of team that we have set up. We're more of a finesse team. Uh, that's why Chris Thompson works so well uh, here is because we're not the one-cut running back situation like we the Redskins have used to uh, been that we all grew up watching. 36 yards, second career touchdown for Capri Bibbs. When you get this much play action, you're going to see the fake dive, the fake reverse, and nobody in space here. Patrick Peterson is the only defender in the area. And the Cardinals are just bad, dude. And look at Bibbs outrunning Dayon Buchanan to the end zone for a touchdown. And like when a plan comes That straight reminded me of the Saints when we played the Saints like a couple years back and um, we threw the screen uh, to. Uh, Matt Jones, and Matt Jones went for like 79 yards or something on him. Obviously, this wasn't as bad, but it was that as it was as wide open uh, of a screen that, you know, it brought back the memory of that screen versus the uh, Saints. Together, right? Well, that one came together perfectly. But today, looks pretty good. Obviously, the defensive turnovers have helped. Now lost tight end Jordan Reed. Cousin sacked. Guess who? Chandler Jones. Later in this football game. First and 10, 33 yard line, play action. Dabbert sets, fires downfield. He's looking for Nelson, and he makes the catch. JJ Nelson. I don't know what I was doing. I don't even remember this play uh, during the game, so I must have been getting something to drink or something. Nelson at the Redskins, 21. Release, great inside release by JJ Nelson and Bashad Breland is playing, having a good year as well, but he does not have the speed to keep up with the JJ Nelson at all. And this is a great adjustment to the football. You look for guys down the field to be able to contort their body and make those types of catches. That's the fullback on first and goal. Gabbert throws, it's picked off. What a first half for Preston Smith. Got a flag at the end of the play. Recovery early. He had that hit on Gabbert. And now his second career. Yeah. Get ready to start seeing quarterback play like we just saw in that last play uh, next year maybe. And Preston Smith, um, he like I said, he must have heard what I said in my last video how I'm starting to get tired of him not having any production. Um, but... You know, he's kind of doing the, what everyone likes to call is the Ryan Kerrigan type of treatment where at the end of the year, Ryan Kerrigan's going to have some decent stats and everything, but they didn't come in a, a, a time that directly impacted games for us to win. Uh, and now we are the best case scenario for the Redskins is 8-8, eight and eight, and uh, now he's turning it on. Uh, I, you can't be extremely mad about it, but it's just like I hope that this doesn't I hope this doesn't stick in the minds of uh, our talent evaluators at the end of the season uh, who are going to think, hey, maybe Preston Smith is going to translate this into the beginning of next year and he's going to do it the entire year because we've been saying that for multiple years now and he just doesn't show up. Uh, he's just non-existent uh, on the football field. We need a real pass rusher. Uh, that would be my number one priority in this draft if it's not a quarterback. And inside, and the delivery is just poor. So the Redskins back to work from the 41. Vernon Davis made the catch and then lost the football. 
Tremont Williams takes it down the sideline and is forced out of bounds at the 20. So, the so literally either the next play or the play after that, uh, we give the ball right back to the Cardinals. Uh, Vernon Davis, I th someone else brought this up, and Vernon Davis just looks like a guy who w does not want to be contacted anymore. He's got, you can tell he's wearing that, like, neck thing. Um, and I think, I think in the, I think it was versus the uh, Cowboys, we ran this really far down the, the out route with Vernon Davis, and he caught the ball on the sideline, and he got walloped. And ever since then, I think he's been kind of hesitant to get hit and things like that, and other people have been bringing that up. And, uh, I mean, the guy's still got it. He's fast. He can catch the football. But it just seems like right now, I don't know whether he's saying, whether he's thinking the season's over, I'm not trying to get injured, or he just doesn't want contact at all uh, just because of his, his, his age or whatever. I don't know. But that is something to look out for. Uh, and it's kind of a shame because, you know, he is our best option at, at, at tight end right now. So, Redskins give it right back. We'll see right here. You got to watch these in real time. He makes the catch, turns up field. I think clearly that's a reception, yeah. a fumble. I agree. Calls fumble, clear recovery, and well done. You see him at the top of your screen coming across. He's wide open. And Kirk gets Cousins hit, takes a shot. It's Antoine Bethea that comes in. Little ball of wear on the backside of his arm. Knocks it free. The Cardinals are back in business on offense. All turnovers automatically reviewed. With them. Right, two Arizona turnovers. Cardinals offensively. Four trips into the red zone. No touchdown. Short kickoff by Dawson. And the Cardinals have recovered. Buda Baker is having a tremendous rookie season on special teams and on defense for the Cardinals. Buda Baker, he's 36, but watch the ball spin back away from the returners and right into the arms, waiting arms of the NFL's leading special team voter for the Pro Bowl, Buda Baker. That is very fortuitous for the Arizona Cardinals as they start the second half. So it would figure. All right, so on that play, I'm not going to jump all over people for that. How often do you see that happen? But then you need to ask yourself, how often do you see that happen? Because people know to get the football, and it doesn't look like Niles Paul. You know, we saw Buda Baker dive for that football. Uh, our guy, Niles Paul, didn't dive at all. So, um, it's whatever, man. You know, if if we would have lost this game, maybe that that's the whole if and him. But if we would have lost this game, I'm sure we would have been more upset about that. Off the fake to Piran. Cousins rolling right. And now he throws. Jamison Crowder makes the catch. Feels like they got a rhythm going. Shows you how bad they've been on offense today. Cousins with loads of time. Wide open as Piran into Cardinals territory. And he is finally dragged out of bounds by Josh Bynes at the Arizona 34 place. I would just like to point out there on that play Kirk Cousins went through all of his reads and at the time he made the right read now if you watch football around the NFL how many other quarterbacks are going to go through all of their reads stay, keep their head in it and make the right play like that does Kirk Cousins do that every single play no he doesn't but for the most part obviously the reason that he's going to get paid is because he does the right thing and if you just watch other quarterbacks around the league play football. Um, they they make mistakes. They don't do that. They we us as Redskins fans, we should know this. We should. This is not something I would have should need to be bringing up to you. We have not had someone make the right decision for quite some time. This is play number seven. Cousins wide open. Jamison Crowder. And Crowder. Also, Kirk Cousins in this game showed exactly why he is the number one rated quarterback in play action. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's the number one quarterback in play action uh, pass S since he started in 2015 as the starter. Uh, I'm pretty sure I would uh, someone please look this up if you want to correct me, but I'm pretty sure that every single year, the past three years, he is number one in the NFL at play action passes and, uh, what a what a good stat to have, man.
Bears forced out of bounds at the 11 yard line. First down at 20 from the 11. As Ryan Grant makes the catch and it's spun away from a couple of Cardinal defenders. I love Ryan Grant, man. Um, when it, this goes all the way back to the Atlanta Falcons game a couple of years ago, where you know. We, we actually, the Falcons were a very good team at the time, and we were playing them really hard, and we get into overtime, and Kirk Cousins throws an out route to Ryan Grant, and he slips and he falls, and the ball's intercepted, uh, ran back for a, a pick six, and, you know, Ryan Grant took a lot of heat from that. He even took heat from me, and a lot of people were saying, oh, who, how do we know that's Kirk's fault or Ryan Grant's fault? Whatever. But, uh, Ryan Grant, I'm pretty sure, was either a rookie at the, I'm pretty sure he was a rookie that year, um, but... Regardless, a lot of fans have had it out for Ryan Grant for quite some time, but he most definitely is one of my favorite receivers that we have. He is the closest thing, sort of, to a, a possession receiver that we have. And uh, he's stepped up his role so much, especially, th thank God that we have Ryan Grant, man. Because if we did not have Ryan Grant, and we're sitting here putting uh, Terrell Pryor on IR... And we don't have someone to come. We don't have someone to come in and play. We don't have someone to come in and step up and make receptions like that. Do you understand how bad this offense would be? Our this team would be like uh, we would be looking like Blaine Gabbert is our quarterback if we didn't have people like Ryan Grant to step up and be these guys who, if you go around the NFL, no one else, no other fan base will know who Ryan Grant is. But he's slowly. Uh, making a name for himself. Out to the 26-yard line. Put up some huge numbers at Colorado State. The end around to Doxon, and it does not fool the Arizona. All right, for, for this play, like, I get it. I'm not going to be upset about this play. Uh, we're just literally trying to get the ball into Josh Doxon's hands, and uh, this is actually something we've been asking to see. We want to see what Josh Doxon can do. We want to see him, but I don't – I want to see him catch passes. I don't, you know, I'm not going to get on anybody for this play call. It's whatever. Um, we're, if we were down and we called that, yeah, it's a different scenario. But we're winning at this point, and we're just trying to make something happen. Uh, we're not getting – We I can't remember Josh Doxon having a bunch of catches in this game. So now that I'm looking back at it, get, just handing him the ball, seeing what he can do with the football, I'm not too upset about this. Cardinals, Kareem Martin brings down Josh Doxson. The battle bug deal. Like both these teams with numerous key players on IR as Penny keeps on going for the Redskins 41. How about that run right there? Not here, it moves the field so many times, no touchdowns. On the left hash. <clears throat> Side note. Um, the NFL or whoever, you know, uploads these videos to YouTube. They like to show us all these field goals that people make, but sometimes you'll you'll be looking on your phone, right, and you'll be like, "Oh shit, Aaron Rodgers has three interceptions or whatever," and then you want to go back and you want to watch. You're like, "Damn, like you know, some quarterback has three interceptions or something." Like Big Ben has like five interceptions or whatever, and then you go and you want to watch you want to watch the game the highlights here on YouTube, and they show you like all these field goals. But they won't show you, like, all three Aaron Rodgers interceptions, all three of the turnovers. It's like, I want to see that. I want to see interceptions. I want to see what the de what decisions the quarterbacks made to throw interception. I don't care if it's a tipped pass. I don't care. I want to see those interceptions. Y you show us the, all the field goals, a 32-yard field goal, uh, but show me all the turnovers. I want to see every turnover. Austin is 5 for 5. Cardinals haven't scored a touchdown at... Nine full quarters. Gabbert can't find anyone. And he steps out of bounds back at the seven-yard line or earlier. And Hopkins' kick is good. Just Side note about Dustin Hopkins. I, I, I just don't understand why he has his job back. Like, this team is so forgiving. This team is so... Um, this team is so ready to give someone as many chances as they need to to show up and play well for us. Dustin Hopkins is a kicker. He got injured and had to be put on IR for I don't know how many games, 
but he got he got put on IR as a kicker. And we brought in Nick Rose, and I think I, the only field goals I can remember Nick Rose missing is maybe the extra point, which it was a bobbled uh, it was a bobbled uh, hold, and then one I think a field goal that was blocked. Uh, so I just don't understand why Dustin Hopkins is getting another shot. I don't understand why we we don't move on. Like if you're not going to be ready to play and you're a kicker, why are we giving you another shot? Now I how you can go back to all my videos, even when Dustin Hopkins missed a couple kicks and stuff like that, uh, everyone was out for his head. I said no, 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 no. He's better than average. I like the guy. Keep him. He's he's all right, and I would defend him. But if you are a kicker and you are put on IR, I just don't understand why this team is so forgiving. We have a new guy, also has a, a big leg, wasn't really missing anything, didn't do anything for us to say, oh, we should drop him. And we, we give Dustin Hopkins his, his place back. I just don't understand why we are so forgiving, especially when it's coming to, to like, a kicker. Like, do your job. Don't don't get placed on IR as a kicker. Inside the left upright. Five eliminated with a loss. Oh. Cardinals have not won back-to-back -back games this season. As Gabbard throws him, there's Fitzgerald. His first catch since late in the second quarter. His fifth today. 24 yards. <clears throat> a Cardinals first down. We're going in motion to check man-to-man -man right there. Gabbard on third down. Looks to escape the pressure. Stays on his feet, lost the football, and falls on it. Oh. You guys better get used to watching this Blaine Gabbert play. You guys better get used to seeing more of that here in D.C. soon. All the way back at the 48-yard line. Gabbert from the shotgun on first down. Steps up. Now he throws. Underneath. So let me go back. Steps up. Damn it. I couldn't I couldn't stop it. Nicholas, the antenna receiver, was it stripped I couldn't stop it right, but this is close, Kenny. Clearly he had the football and yanked it. Gabbert slides and has a first down as we take another look at that previous play. The completion and it didn't necessitate the review. Alright, first and fifteen. Pass is caught by Foster. And Foster is taken down by Josh Harvey Clemens. Second down and nine. Gabbert for Foster. Vigil the tackle. Cardinals have one timeout. Clock continues to run down to 45 seconds. 31. 37 seconds remaining. Gabbert fires. Nicholas could not hang on to it. Play clock winding down. They get the snap off. And that pass gets batted down. Anthony Lanier again for the... The Anthony Lanier show. A couple games back, I said, when are, we, when are we getting hands up in the air? When we aren't getting to the quarterback, why aren't we batting passes down? And now Anthony Lanier is doing that. Third time today. What a game for Lanier. Third down and ten. Gabbert throws, and this one is broken up by Kendall Fuller. Comes down to this. Fourth down and ten. Gabbert throws. Catch. It's Gerald. Oh, incomplete. Came out. Kendall Fuller defending it now. Three flags. All right, so... <clears throat> On that last play, um, I was I was so scared that uh, DJ Swanger taking his helmet off. We were going to get screwed with penalties and going to give them the ball back. Luckily, you know, like they said, it was a dead ball foul. Uh, I mean, just sometimes like that, that type of stuff scares the shit out of me. It reminds me of like the Brandon Merriweather. That's why I made comparisons to DJ Swanger uh, and Brandon Merriweather when we acquire DJ Swanger because of certain things like that scare the shit out of me with penalties and stuff like that. But I mean, I can't say enough about DJ Swanger and I was dead wrong about DJ Swanger. Uh, he brought something to this team that we did not have, even as a losing 
pretty bad defense. That guy hasn't been hurt, really. I'm pretty sure he's played most games all year, and he just brings something to the team that nobody else could bring. Um, there was somebody else, you know, I'm not going to name names, but they said uh, they were they were talking about how, oh, man, uh, it's not TJ Swearinger that brought the swag to this defense. It's Josh Norman. And I just don't understand how you could rationalize that and say that and believe that when you're watching DJ Swearinger rip his helmet off and screaming uh, on the last play of the game that he broke up at the last second. Like, I love Josh Norman, but he's not vocal like that. He's not he's not running over to the other team's sideline talking shit to him and just, you know, constantly uh, talking and talking and talking and doing his best that he can to back it up. Um, so... Now, you guys got to let me know if you guys like um, this different format of, you know, watching the game and the game highlights and going through like this. I don't know if uh, this video is going to get flagged by YouTube because I used the highlights, uh, but I don't really care. Um, you know, it's not like I make, you know, good money doing this or anything like that. Uh, YouTube's gone, you know, downhill like crazy, so... I just want to try to make a better format, uh, and hopefully one day, you know, I'll I'll get like a green screen green screen situation, you know, and then it'll it'll just look a little bit better, and then uh, then we could sit here and we could watch those highlights with the green screen behind me, and you know, it will be a little bit cooler. Um, so I'm not gonna waste any more time, man. This game, it, it it's nice that we got to win. But it's still uneventful. Um, it's nice. All we can sit here and do is watch An Anthony Lanier uh, do his best to make the football team next year and look for other players who want to make the football team next year. So uh, I'm sure I'm forgetting some stuff. If you guys got anything else to say, put it in the comments. I'll do my best to get back to you guys. As always, hail to the Redskins, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.